All right, welcome to a Scale Garage Rig Review. We have a brand new venue today. Yeah, we're sort of uh, on site at East Coast Scale Challenge. It's kind of exciting. 2014. Yep, and we are sitting today, privileged to sit in Andy's cabin. This is one of the premier builders in America. And today we get to show off some unbelievable rigs. These things are absolutely incredible. And what's even better than that is that Andy's son Cameron is deep into it and he's also building glorious specimens of truck. <laughs> so we're going to show that off today too. So you're getting a triple rig review here today at the Scale Garage. Yeah. So first, uh, Andy, let's talk about when you guys got into the hobby. When we got in it, uh, I'm going to say, oh, it's around 2000. Yeah. And what was popular then? You were what The were you AX-10 doing? had oh, yeah. just come out. Right. And uh, I liked it, and I got the X-Trail from the TCS crawlers, and I built a Land Cruiser, and we went to a competition in Augusta, Georgia. Our first one, we never knew anything about it, and we absolutely fell in love with the sport, and we've been doing it ever since. <laughs> and where are you from? Where? I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. Okay, excellent. Down south roll tide country. Well, they certainly know how to build some <laughs> incredible tiny trucks. It, oh, yeah. They're unbelievable. So this was not about crawling for you. This was about scale trucks right from the start. Uh, I've been an avid modeler for since I could hold a tube of glue. <laughs> Well, it certainly shows. It I certainly built, shows. I, I can't say how many model cars I've built because I've built so many. My son, he's been building model cars, and it just it just trickles down to the trucks. Yeah. You know, the details, the valve stems, you know, everything. So how did you get started? AX-10? Yeah, basically the same time he did. Yep. What was your first truck? Well, the first one he let me drive was probably... <laughs> well, yeah, drive is the key word. Yeah. 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 You get permission, special permission. I still get permission. He doesn't even let me drive them out. Well, when, when, <laughs> when they're this good, you know, yeah. it's almost like it, there's a certain way to drive and there's, there's a certain, you know, you don't want to yeah, scratch them too much and, and no. cause too much It was a little, what do you call it, trigger happy? Yeah. Trigger happy, yeah. 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 He's gotten a lot better. We built him a Scout afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, when the, the SCX-10 came out, we built him an International Scout. And one of the biggest things he's been since a, he was a, just a little child, he's been fascinated with cars with blowers on them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So his, he, his scalp has a big old blower on <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. You can uh, do a search on scale 4x4 four four and probably find some pictures of it. Oh, cool. Right. right. Awesome. <clears throat> so what did you build here for the show? Are, are these running trucks that were entered in competition? Uh, the Scrambler was entered in competition. The Bronco was entered in competition. The uh, the Mellow Jeep was one I did for the show and shine. Right. You sure did. Yeah. And, uh, last year I did a beautiful Toyota truck. Y'all remember it from Oh, last boy, year. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, and did you win Best of Show? Best last of year? Show last year. Yeah, awesome. Nice. Of course, yeah. they had a little different format last year than they did this yeah. year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, this year you won an award already. Yeah, I got Best Paint with the Scrambler. Oh, it's gorgeous. Wow. Yeah. And I did not expect that. <laughs> this is a really nice truck. So let's go through the Scrambler first and find out what, what's under it, what chassis are you using, what kind of rims and tires, what kind of it's body. It's got the, uh, it's a SCX-10 chassis. Okay. Uh, I had to custom make all the links to get it to align with the, the body fender wells. Yep. Uh, it has the uh, K RC four-wheel drive, K44 wheels, the uh, Tamiya F350 shocks. Uh, there wasn't a lot of shocks to choose from at that time when no. I was putting that together. And I really liked them. Uh, when we built Cameron Scout, we used the same F-350 shocks on them. He put a little grease on some O-rings, yep. put them together, and they work great for crawling. Oh, good. Uh, they're, they're, they're ultra soft. And you notice when you set my Jeep down, it just goes completely down. They don't stay up. Nice. I like my stuff real soft to yep. the point where the, when the weight of the vehicle sitting on the suspension, it's compressed, just, just like the real ones. That's what I like, too. And... Uh, the, the wheels on it are your infamous slotted mag wheels. When I first saw them, I had a fit. And I said, <laughs> that's the yeah. perfect set of wheels yeah. for my Jeep. Yeah, and certainly and I is. got them and I put them on there and that's where they're staying. And you've done a couple of really nice scale extras on these rims. 
you've got the acorn nuts on the hardware, and then you've also added a valve stem. Drill a hole and out of the valve stem, and you know, I highly yeah. recommend you want to take your wheels up one notch, you can add that hole in there with probably wouldn't even take much to do it. No, and boy, I, when I first noticed that you'd done that, I said to myself, that is a oh, really know. nice idea. It I just saw that adds. and I was like, the, are those valve stems? I, I was like, oh. <laughs> Mel Jeep has them also. It's really, really hard to see, but on each tire, or each uh, rim, there's a little tiny valve stem. And, you know, no one's doing that except Randy and his son, and they are absolutely incredible. Yeah. yeah. The, the body started as a Proline scrambler for the Traxxas T-Max, E-Max. So that's, that's, that's Lexan. It's a Lexan body. Unbelievable. And uh, well, I cut the top off of it and cut all the back out of it. And at that time, the uh, Ambush CGR body had just come out. And I was like, well, I'm going to butcher this up for the cage. <laughs> yeah. And the center section. And I grafted it all together. And I didn't have the opportunity to do the full interior. This was like the second build. Right. Yeah. But uh, I've got one more of these bodies sitting at home. And... It's going to get the full interior, real tube cage, uh, a whole lot. It's going to look twice as good as this one. So the, the finish on this is absolutely impeccable. So you've sprayed this on... This is painted, this Lexan body is painted on the outside. And you, this must be something that you do for a living because these paint jobs are probably the best this weekend. Oh, for sure. Say. For sure, 100%. Yeah. Uh, I do uh, automotive body, body work for a living and painting and stuff like that so the painting just trickles down to the trucks. Oh, Same yeah. with my models, I always use real car paint on them. So it's real car automotive paint that you're painting these. You must thin them down a bit to get the detail. It's just, wow. Yeah. Now, Cameron's body is painted on the outside, but uh, you wouldn't believe me if I told you that it was Tamiya, uh, some kind of German aircraft green. Wow. Uh, the secret to painting Lexan bodies on the outside is putting a base on them for the paint to stick, and I always spray them either outlaw black or sprint white. So yeah. this is the Tamiya PS paint that you put on we as a put primer. The, we put the Tamiya or the Pactra, the outlaw okay. black. Okay. Yeah. You put the Lexan paint on there, and then you let it dry. And we'll, I'll take a little red Scotch Sprite pen and kind yeah. of go back over it. Yep. Yeah. And then you can put any color you want on it. On the, so what right. you're saying is I can then put the Tamiya TS paint over top, uh, yes. even though it's a Lexan body, because you, you have that many more what, color choices. You can see how his body's flexed, and that model paint is just flexing right along with it. Yeah. Well, when you have master builders, that's definitely a top tip where, you know, we're so limited to what we can paint our Lexan bodies because, you know, Tamiya and, and others, they don't have a lot available. But if you can then go to the TS paints, uh, which have so many more color variants. Yeah. You know, then you have so many more options. What a great top tip. The the, the secret is the uh, the base. Yeah. The yeah. foot. Yeah. When you if you prime it with the uh, black Lexan paint or white, whatever color you want to use, as long as you put the Lexan paint on it first and then scuff it, you can put anything you want out there. Paint will stick to paint, but uh, model paint won't stick to Lexan no matter how hard to try. No. So, so when did you build this? That was, we built this for this event. This is a special one too. For those that know, this is uh, Gas Monkey, which is a very popular show right now. And um, this is the Bronco from Gas Monkey. It's even got the decal on it. And, you know, it's just, even the interior is mimicking everything from that one-to-one -one on Gas Monkey. Well done. Really well done. It's a beautiful build. That's what he, that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to do something different. Hey, we both watched uh, Fast and Loud on TV. And we loved the <laughs> Great. show. Great. And he remembers the Bronco with the plaid, and plaid in the seats, and we did the best we could to replicate it. And I think we hit it pretty close. So, yeah. what chassis did you put under there? It's just a stock SCX10 with, and we just custom made most of the links out of aluminum tubes, so, so they'd fit. And it's got a, it's got a lot of your parts on it too. It's got the GCM panhard bar in the uh, front motor mount and transfer case and the four link mount in the rear. How do you like it? I love it. Good performer? Yeah. Because my other truck, it's still got the stock axial three link, it's still got the axle mounted servo because I mean when I built that truck I was like, hey, what? I didn't have the money to make it nice. Yeah. I actually spent money on this truck. <laughs> You've you even go. got a little RC truck in the back. <laughs> 
and yeah, uh, this came together rather quickly. Eh? Like you yeah, wanted to get like, this ready this for the like event. Three eh? weeks. <laughs> two I mean, weeks. three weeks. This would have taken me three years to do. You know, like it's just these guys really know what they're doing. This oh is yeah. A, this is a, a effort of father and son for two weeks. Wow. Oh yeah. Great. We were working on it literally Wednesday night. I believe it. <laughs> we had to get on the plane Thursday morning. Oh man. It's got a few scratches and dents in the front there. How do you feel about that? You're okay with that? Because, you know, this one this one has nothing on it when it comes to scratches and dents. But this one's got a few. It's, it's seen the trails. You were he having run, fun this weekend. He run the King of the Rose, and he run hard. Yeah, he was yeah. very oh, successful. Yeah. He, for, he, almost, he almost got it. If for he those, had time to waterproof his truck. Right, yeah. So it you may want to explain better. what the King of the Rose is. It's it's uh, what what event is that uh, uh, within East Coast Scale Challenge? It was just a, it was just a mile long course through like the woods and water. It was through about everything. And and how many gates did we have? To, it was uh, like 90, 91. 90, 90, uh, 91 gates. Ninety one gates. Yes. Yeah. And we all sort of lined up at the start. All the cars. Was, uh, the shotgun and, and, shotgun like and away we went. And it was like yeah. no holds bar, right? Like yeah. people running over people, and you know, oh, it was just yeah. it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really good time. <clears throat> a big truck pile up. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah there yeah. was several. I got to uh, one of the water bridges, and there's two off on the side, and there's one over. <laughs> and I, I managed to get down to the to the little shelf to get across the bridge without flipping over. Yeah. But everybody else was going down here, and there was just a little. Little thing going around to the side, and I managed to squeak around it and get down there without flipping. And then Tom comes up, well, you can move the landscape to help you get where you're going. Well, thanks a lot. And there's a truck right upside down, right in front of me. I can't go nowhere. There's two feet of water here. Yeah. There's a, you know, where I just come down, I couldn't get back up. So I'm sitting there, and they're just the trucks are piling up behind me. And I said, dude, I got to go. So I started piling rock rocks up around his truck. I drove over his truck, got on the bridge, and took off. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Great times. And that's a new event for East Coast Scale Challenge. Yeah. We did the uh, Sorka class rules for class one, two, three, and TTC Sunday morning. And then this year they actually added the King of the Rose event, which gave a lot of people opportunity to run. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because they only had 1.9 or 2.2 classification. Within that, it's anybody's game. And for those that don't know what we're talking about, we, we did a video on class one and class two. We'll That's link right. it below. Yeah. Um, yeah, this this is a great event. It brings out all kinds of people, uh, master builders, uh, incredible rigs. So yeah, we'll we'll cue the, the class one, class two yeah. video for you guys in case you wanna sort of get in, involved somehow. <clears throat> so speaking of master builds, we have to have a look at this scale replica. There's some real special stuff going on with this truck. Uh, first of all, tell me what kind of body did this start out as? That's the uh, infamous two-door uh, China, two-door JK body. Yeah. Uh, just like the one I gave you a year ago. This one weekend, year ago, this, this weekend. weekend. You built this specifically for this event. I built right? this yeah. specifically this is brand new. for the show in China. Yeah. Uh, every year I try to build something real nice. Not get out there on the rocks and beat to death, but you know. <laughs> Um, the amazing thing about this is it's right hand drive, I right? I changed the, the dash, I cut the dash up to right hand drive, it's not the left hand drive. And that's, uh, that's important that's because... That's typical for a uh, United States sure, Postal Service Jeep. Right? You got it. And you would never know, I mean, there are a couple of these, I think you've got one or two uh, of yep. this body shape yep. and interior. And you wouldn't be able to tell whether you've cut into that or not. That's how well it's done. Yeah, it's amazing. This carpet... You got the seats all done right. In the back, it's full of packages. Mail. You know, there's a little. Bag. There's a mail bag. <laughs> like a mail bag. Are you With kidding mail. me? With mail in it. <laughs> little tiny packages, and I mean, it's just, it's just crazy, craziness. That's amazing. Yeah. And we took this truck out for a fun run, uh, a bunch of us there yesterday, yes. and we'll link the video for that down below too, because this not only does this Jeep look amazing i mean full handmade custom bumpers on it and everything but the performance of this truck is totally incredible all kinds of little packages little tiny rope tied up all in the back ready for delivery amazing so what 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 do you have underneath what are you running on it's running the gcm skeleton chassis that's that, the uh, j2 yep j2 yep. chassis that he designed uh, when I gave him that body a year ago. I said, look, let's just make a chassis for this. I think this thing's going to be hot, and it certainly has. There's, oh, it's hot. 
everybody's buying these bodies and doing them, and yep. his chassis just fits in it with, with nothing. Now, pretty neat bumpers on that. Pretty, oh, they look custom. Could you tell me a little bit about what the you bought? The bumpers bump? are made from steel. Uh, I do car. I was working on a '70 Chevelle to restore, and I was cutting pieces of metal out of the trunk lid to fix some rust holes. And I decided to cut me some pieces out and build me some bumpers. <laughs> well, they're beautiful. Yeah. So that's a full steel welded custom design. I made the bumpers fit. myself. Yeah. Boy, you can sure tell because they're exactly what this shell needs. They fit perfectly. And of course, being all steel, they protect the body real well, too. Yeah. They also chip real easy because of the paint. <laughs> Listen, we won't, we won't, we won't point that out. <laughs> we well, don't yeah. know how we did that, yeah, but we're yeah, not going to worry yeah. about it. Well, we got touch-up paint at home. Right. It's all lit up, too, lights. Oh, it's, got the, it's got lights. I can turn the hazards on and off. Nice. Just like the Mel Jeep going down the road with its hazards on. Yeah. Uh, the light system, I can turn the headlights on and off, the park lamps. Uh, I didn't get a chance to light the dash up. The, uh, the cluster is not very detailed, so I really just found a picture of a uh, white gauge yeah. thing on the internet and I kept shrinking it down until it would fit close close enough into the dashboard. Yep, and it looks fantastic. Uh, I showed it to the mailman, he says it's just got one problem, there ain't nowhere to put the packages and at that time I had the back seat in it. Oh okay. yeah. Okay. He looked at it and he said, where are you going to put everything? And I was like, well you know you got a point there. <laughs> so I pulled the back seat back out and I made a little tray back there for Perfect. I can see Andy waiting at the mailbox for the mailman to come to show him the truck and say, you know, is drives, this close enough? You know, what, what can you tell me about it? To, <laughs> it to, he actually drives a red one. Oh, okay, all right. But it is right-hand drive, the one he drives. Oh, that's great. Uh, what about the decal work? Did you, where did you get that? How did I had you... that done. The, there's a graphic sign place, you know, just right there on the way home. Okay. From the uh, hobby store. And uh, I went in there and asked them if they could make me some graphics. And they said yes. And I told them what I wanted. And I Showed them the picture of the Mel Jeep I was trying to copy off the internet, and they made them all. Wow. It's so authentic with the extra detail. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, yeah. uh, it's really hard to see, and I've seen these bodies. Chris, you've got a few, but, you know, there are these these sort of imitation on yours yeah. uh, bumps that sort of mimic, and they're molded right into the plastic. Well, Andy's gone along and shaved them right off and then replaced them with actual steel, real hardware. It's... I mean, if you could see this close up, it is incredible, yeah. the little details that set it off. Yeah, unbelievable. Crazy. And the authentic license plate in the back. Government. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. nice. It was made by Crawler Concepts. Yeah. We'll link Crawler Concepts down below. They're doing license plates in the authentic reflective material, proper scale size, scale hardware. The, just that one accessory alone really sets it off. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks so much, guys, for sharing your rigs with us. Thanks for, thanks for Appreciate sharing them with us. all the guys on the channel. And uh, be sure, you guys that are watching, be sure to like, subscribe, make your comments down below. Uh, thank Andy and Cameron for coming in and sharing their rigs. And uh, we're excited to be down here at East Coast Scale Challenge and taking in all this incredible work here. The uh, organizers of this event did a great job. Thanks for John Thornton, who put this together, and RC Four Wheel Drive title sponsor. And uh, we were very happy to be involved at this event. And uh, thanks, guys, for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.